Good morning folks, 21st Century Caveman here. Hope everybody's well, hope everybody's safe. So today we're going to be discussing masks and respirators and during the course of this discussion I may well be using the terms interchangeably so please bear with me. Now this is clearly very topical at the moment uh, due to the current global situation and it may be the case that there's a natural crossover with those of us who do DIY and certain renovation activities. I mean clearly we might have one or two of these things knocking around in our homes and our workshops and I thought it might be useful to consider whether or not we can use these effectively outside of these settings to enhance our health and safety and those of our families. So first of all then we're going to be talking about the FFP respirators and um, this is what we're um, having a look at on the bench in front of us now. Most of these have been used incidentally. So first things first, what does FFP stand for? It stands for filtering face piece. Now under the European standard EN 149 colon 2001, there are three classifications of FFP respirators. You've got class one, two and three, and they are known as FFP ones, FFP twos and FFP threes. The other thing to make clear about the FFP respirators is the fact that their filtration effectiveness is tested from the outside into inside, unlike surgical masks, which are tested from the inside to the outside. So let's start by looking at the FFP1 masks then. So these are basically your bottom of the barrel really. However, they're obviously better than nothing. Now these do come with valves and without valves, but we'll discuss those later. So the FFP1 then is the respirator which offers the least effective filtration of the three classifications. So it has an aerosol filtration of a minimum of 80%. And this is mainly used as a dust mask by DIYers, people like myself. Now, typically you would use one of these for doing some sanding, drilling, and your cutting. So these are purely for dust protection only, and they will offer protection from low levels of dust. If it's really intense, then you need to go a step up basically. So prior to the current situation then, they were very easy to get hold of, but you know, you try getting hold of any now. So if you've got some, as I say, they are better than nothing, but don't be too reliant upon them. Okay then, so let's have a look at the FFP2 masks or respirators. So once again, these are disposable masks which offer um, a much better degree of filtration. They have a filtration efficiency of 94% and these are typically used in the construction and agricultural industries and also throughout many parts of the world by healthcare professionals against, so for example, influenza viruses. In a DIY setting, they're perfect for using in tasks such as sanding and plastering. And because they offer such good protection against liquid aerosols, in other words, particles which are basically floating around in the air. Interestingly, the FFP2 respirators, they're actually recommended by the World Health Organization for medical procedures which generate aerosols. For example, um, the ventilation and open suctioning of the respiratory tract and also in surgical procedures which involve the use of high speed drills and you know cutting devices and once again when we're talking about aerosols we're talking about particles which are basically floating around in the air okay so by way of comparison then the ffp2 respirators are roughly equivalent to the american n95 mask or respirator which you may have heard quite a bit about and they're used and recommended in many countries as protection against infectious airborne diseases and it's also worth noting that uk guidelines do stipulate that where the much safer high specification FFP3 respirator is not available. Um, healthcare professionals can actually use the FFP2 respirator as protection against infectious airborne particles. But as I say, that's only where the FFP3 is not available. Okay then, so let's take a look at the FFP3 respirators. 
Now these currently offer the highest levels of protection and provide a minimum filtration efficiency of 99%. So these are very effective indeed for protecting against very fine solid and liquid particles floating in the air such as asbestos and other dangerous airborne particles such as um, hazardous powders which are commonly found in the pharmaceutical industry. So these then are the only respirators currently approved by the UK's Health and Safety Executive otherwise known as the HSE for use in healthcare settings to protect staff against infectious aerosols or airborne particles in UK healthcare settings. And uh, when we're talking about aerosols, the sorts of procedures which will generate these airborne particles in clinical settings involve the ventilation and open suctioning of the respiratory tract and other surgical procedures which involve the use of high speed drilling and cutting implements. So basically the UK guidelines are actually more robust than the World Health Organization guidelines because as I've previously said, the UK stipulate that the FFP3s should be used and the FFP2 respirators only used whereby the 3s are not available. I think the other important thing to bear in mind is the fact that these masks or respirators are clearly only effective when they're worn properly and they haven't been damaged, sold or compromised in some way. So clearly their effectiveness will depend upon the seal between the person's skin and the seal provided by the mask or respirator. So therefore it's fair to say that if you do have facial hair such as um, um, stubble, a beard or a, a large you know, handlebar moustache or something, then it could compromise the seal and therefore compromise the effectiveness provided by the mask. Now the other important thing to make clear is the fact that regardless whether or not you're using one of these FFP3 or an FFP2 respirators, they won't actually filter out the virus itself because the virus is too small. However, what it can do is to stop the spread of large droplets which may contain the virus. Now you'll also note that the masks or respirators on display here. Some of them have different design features, notably some have valves and some don't. So the ones then which have valves, they're designed to let air out of the mask. Now these tend to be less sweaty and less uncomfortable than the ones without valves, but they are obviously a tad more bulky. Then of course we have the other design type where they don't actually have a valve as such. They actually rely on the fabric of the mask or respirator to provide the filtration. So clearly they do tend to be um, a little bit lighter and they're not as bulky to carry or indeed to wear. The other thing is the fact that in terms of the mask and respirators, some are molded, some are folded. So basically the molded ones, which you can see on the workbench here, they offer the closest possible fit because they can be contoured to match the, uh, the contours of your face and provide the best possible seal against your nose, your mouth and your chin. So arguably they're more effective than the folded type because the folded type, they won't actually offer the flushest possible fit against the contours of your face. And clearly, therefore, they're not going to be as effective, are they? So what we'll do now then, we'll just have a, um, a quick chat about surgical face masks. I don't actually have any, but I'm going to include a picture or two on the screen now. So the thing about surgical masks then is the fact that they're designed to block liquid or water droplets, which are basically the same thing. So they're designed basically to stop medical staff infecting patients by breathing water droplets on them and also to stop sick patients breathing water droplets on medical staff, i.e. you know, through coughing, sneezing or just basic breathing. But they won't stop the virus on its own because the material they're made of simply isn't small enough to filter out the virus. But once again, their aim is to try and block liquid or water droplets which may contain the virus. So quite apart from the lesser degree of protection offered by surgical masks, another important difference between these is the way in which they're tested. Now the filtration efficiency of a surgical mask is tested from the inside 
outwards. Whereas previously mentioned, the FFP respirators are tested from the outside inwards. Surgical masks can be either fluid resistant or not. Clearly, if they're fluid resistant, they're going to offer far more protection um, against the water droplets, which may be contaminated with hazardous particles. As per respirators, surgical masks are only effective if they're worn consistently and properly. In other words, if you're repeatedly messing around with them, ingesting them or touching your, your face, your nose, your head, then basically you simply expose yourself to a hazardous contaminant or indeed a virus. And the flip side is if you're messing around with them when you're wearing them, it may also be the case that you're exposing other people to a respiratory illness you might actually already have yourself. But it's also fair to say that both the surgical face masks and the FFP respirators, they do both leave the eyes exposed. And it's widely believed that some viruses can affect a person through the membranes of the eyes. So basically, you know, if you're in a high risk occupation or profession, then clearly you need goggles or a visor, something of that nature. Now, before we go, then, we're just going to have a very quick chat about the N95 respirator mask. So basically, by way of background information, the N95 respirator is an American standard from one of its agencies, the NIOSH. That stands for the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health. And this agency is basically responsible for conducting research and making recommendations to the industries for the prevention of work-related diseases and injuries. So anyway, look, the masks themselves, as I say, won't filter out the virus, but they can help to stop the spread of large droplets, which may contain a virus or other hazardous contaminants. And also, of course, if you're wearing one, it may actually prevent the wearer from contaminating other people. Now, there are other masks, which I'm not going to go into any detail about, which offer slightly better protection. You've got the N99s, N100s or P100 masks. So anyway, just to conclude, it's fair to say that if you have a mask or respirator of any description, which I've already discussed, wearing them is better than not wearing one. Clearly, some have greater safety measures than others and that would of course depend on the filtration system and I think it's also important to make clear the fact that just because you hear the use of the word surgical for example with the surgical face mask the word surgical in itself doesn't mean to say that it offers any more protection than one of the masks or respirators you can buy say for example from a DIY store providing it's an FFP2 or an FFP3. And once again, just to stress the fact that these mask respirators are only effective if they're, you know, if they're fitted properly and um, you take lots of sensible precautions and obviously replace them when they become contaminated. Stay safe out there. And I hope this video has been of some help. You take care, stay safe, out.